Today is a very important day for our union and for our sister union in France. Uh, it's not only the Australian unions and the Australian society facing privatisation. Uh, one of our comrades, Gary Rogers, was over there on holidays a couple of months ago and bumped into a massive rally in, in Paris. Went up and started talking to the people. They spoke to him about privatisation and how they're trying to sell off all of their assets. Uh, we built, built a few bonds over that, exchanged a few emails. And this shirt is a result of that. Our sister union over there is fighting privatisation. We've fought privatisation since 2009. We lost the last round. We ain't going to lose this bastard, I can tell you now. <laughs> Comrades, I've lost count of how many rallies we've spoke at and how many rallies we've had in the last three years. It's, it's been huge. Uh, in some ways, Newman's, Newman and Abbott have done us a favour. They've woken people up. People are starting to wake up and go, hang on, this isn't the way our state and country used to be. This isn't the way uh, our kids should bloody inherit. This is not the sort of society our kids should inherit. Uh, we don't like uh, mining companies running our country. We don't like uh, media moguls bloody telling us how we should vote and how we should think. But that's exactly where we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Rupert Murdoch running this country, Gina Reinhart running this country. Uh, go out the Surratt Basin. I've now become a fan of Alan Jones, for Christ's sake. If you'd have asked me that three months ago, I'd have laughed my ass out. I think Alan Jones is a right-wing nut job. But Alan Jones is our right-wing nut job at the moment. We love him. Some of the stuff he's saying out there is fantastic, and he's actually getting out speaking the truth. So I urge any of you today to listen to Alan Jones on principle. Maybe put your principles to one side for a couple of hours and listen to Alan Jones, because what he's saying at the moment is bloody groundbreaking. You've got to ask yourself, though, why isn't the Courier Mail picking that up? Why aren't some of the major media outlets picking that up? Some of the stuff that's going on in this state and has been going on for a long period of time, for three bloody years, uh, this mob pretty much checked out in 1989, give it to the Labor Party for a couple of years, they've come back, they've just clocked on and started business as usual. There's no change to the Bjocky peterson days. I'd put it to you, comrades, it's worse than the Bjocky peterson days. <laughs> these, these, mongrels, these mongrels have 73 seats in an 89-seat parliament. There's no upper house. They've killed the CMC, or it's triple C now. They've killed the parliamentary uh, committee process. They've started picking on minority groups. They've started picking on bikies. They've started picking on trade unionists. The first, one of the first things, and don't ever forget this if you're a trade unionist, one of the first things these bastards did when they got into power was take away our May Day. Over 100 years worth of history, marching on the first Monday in May, the first thing they did was take that office. Did it stop us? No, and we'll proudly march in the, fir the first Monday in May again this year. Uh, illegally down the streets, whatever we have to do. Because that's what you have to do against bad laws, you have to stand up. And I look around this crowd, I see a lot of familiar faces from the last three years. A lot of people standing out, a lot of new people that have had no idea about politics, no care about society, they just get up in the morning, read the paper, go to bed, are starting to wake up. And good on you, comrades, for doing that. Because we've all got kids, we've all got grandkids. We can't leave our kids and grandkids and future generations a society like these bastards are trying to impose on us. We've got a week, one bloody week. Uh, they're on the nose, they're starting to get nervous, they're starting to slag us off. Anyone that saw that bullshit last night on, on that great debate when they tried to tie the CFMEU to the bikey gangs, what a load of crap. What an absolute load of crap. Hopefully Queenslanders are smart enough now to wake up to that crap and go, hang on, that's just bullshit. We've proudly been out in the ETU, we've been proudly out against the Vlad laws the day they were announced. We'll fight them to the, to the, to the day we die. It's not just about bikies though, it's about everyone in this society. Read the Act, it's got nothing to do with bike gangs, it's all about us. Any group they want to deem an outlaw motorcycle uh, group or a, a group they don't like that much, under the legislation he's got the, he's got the power to write that out and say, right, the ETU is the one we're going to target next and we're expecting that, I can tell you ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they don't like us too much for some reason. That's Andy Asset style message is starting to cut through though. People are starting to work out why would we sell $37 billion worth of our assets uh, to Chinese, Singaporean governments, which will be the ultimate people that buy them. Why would we gut our workforces? Why would we let regional Queensland be gutted and not have services like they currently enjoy? And people are starting to get on board the not-for-sale campaign. I urge just before you leave, there's a stall over here to your right, or to my right, come over and have a look. There's some information there, some stickers, some campaign material. Put your name down to volunteer next Saturday. We desperately need people on polling booths to try and knock this government off. We don't care how you vote, ladies and gentlemen, well, we do, uh, as long as you put the LNP last. Put the LNP last, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we can hope for. Thank you very much for your time. Keep it up. One week to go. Thank you.